Sometimes two concepts just don't go well together, like pineapple on pizza, or in today's case, Christmas and Squid Game. Christmas is supposed to be a time of peace on earth and goodwill towards men, so just mentioning it in the same sentence as this horrific game of death is an aneurysm waiting to happen. But if it makes you feel any better, our contestants will only include the naughtiest villains to ever disgrace the true meaning of Christmas. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and this is the Squid Game Christmas Edition. First things first, let's put together our naughty list. Today's contestants include Ebenezer Scrooge, The Grinch, Bumble, The Abominable Snow Monster, The Toy Taker, Professor Hinkle, Snow Miser, Heat Miser, Burgermeister Meisterburger, Kubla Krause, Barnaby, Gretchen Fox, Oogie Boogie, Tammy Crum, Axel Ellingbo, Henry F. Potter, Granville Sawyer, Harry, Marv, Walter Hobbs, Frank Shirley, Toy Santa, Jack Frost, Rudolfa Claus, The White Witch, Clyde Northcutt, Marcus Skidmore, Hans Gruber, Billy Chapman, Ronald Jones Jr., and Jimmy Scrooge Martinez. Some of these characters may be pushing the definition of Christmas and villain, but given how few actual villains there are in Christmas movies, we can't afford to be picky. And side note, for the small handful of characters this actually applies to, they'll all be coming into this game with no special powers whatsoever, to make it an even playing field. With that out of the way, let's get into our first game, that of course being Red Light, Green Light. Red Light, Green Light is all about speed and listening skills. In addition to being physically fit enough to cross the line in the time allotted, survival in this game comes down to two factors, the ability to follow instructions and the ability to maintain calm under pressure. If a character is too headstrong to follow the rules, or not able to keep from flying into a panic, they will certainly get themselves killed. Some of the standouts in this game include Oogie Boogie, who is certainly no stranger to high stakes games with lives on the line. In fact, he actually revels in the death going on around him, and would be perfectly fine in this game. Toy Santa also has a distinct advantage since his inorganic body makes him adapt to freezing in place on the spot. And Marcus would also be able to get through easily with the combination of his small stature and level-headedness under fire. As for the deaths, the first one would have to be Bumble. He's a lot more abominable than Snowman and would be far too simple to be able to understand the instructions, let alone follow them. At the very least, it would probably take a few extra bullets to bring him down. Another one to go down here would be Mr. Potter. Admittedly, this wasn't a fair chance to begin with, as being in a wheelchair is a huge handicap to begin with. However, he is also elderly and suffering from polio, so he basically had no chance. We're also going to eliminate Walter Hobbs, as well as Frank Shirley here as well. Both are only in it for themselves, and it's clear that they don't do well under pressure. As such, as soon as things get serious, they will be the first ones running for the door. Lastly, we have to see Billy Chapman die next. With as much Christmas-induced PTSD as he has, simply getting to this game without flying into a frenzy is going to be a challenge. And with several characters dressed as Santa already, it's not a matter of if he loses control, but when. Down to 25 characters, we now move into round 2, the Honeycomb Challenge. The Honeycomb Challenge requires both a steady hand to trace out the shape of the candy, and the patience to slowly cut out the shape without breaking it. If a character lacks either of these traits, then they won't be likely to pass this game. Those who would pass this game include the Grinch, who is both extremely patient and skilled with a needle, allowing him to easily trace the shape. Heat Miser would likely pass this one by heating the needle to melt the candy. And both Jack Frost, as well as the White Witch, are incredibly patient immortal beings who would have no problem taking their time to cut the candy correctly. On the flip side, the Toy Taker will have to be our first death. Without his powers or other devices, the Toy Taker is just, well, a teddy bear. As such, he lacks the ability to properly hold both the candy and the needle necessary to cut it. We're also going to eliminate Meisterburger, as well as Kubla Kraus, and Barnaby as well. All three of these men are extremely short-tempered, with about as much patience as a spoiled rich kid asking their parents for a fourth car to crash. That is to say that we'll give them about 30 seconds before they each end up smashing the candy to bits in frustration. Another death in this round would have to be Oogie Boogie, similar to the Toy Taker. Oogie's burlap body would make holding both the candy and the needle very difficult. He has a bit more dexterity than the toy taker, however that's counteracted and then some by his general lack of patience, making this game a tough sell. 
Lastly, we have to eliminate our first wet bandit, Harry. While both he and his partner Marv have the bare minimum amount of patience to pass this game normally, we feel there's one handicap that keeps Harry from making it out of this one. That would be the huge burn on his hand, which would again make holding the needle a difficult and painful experience. That, coupled with his waning patience, would certainly cost him this game. We're down to 19 contestants already as we move into our next round, the Midnight Brawl. While not an official round, the Midnight Brawl is still a significant enough event for us to count. In this free-for-all, one needs to either have the strength and skill necessary to take on multiple foes at once, or to have the intelligence and cleverness to be able to hide and wait for it. Right off the bat, both Mrs. Crumb and Mr. Ellingbow get an immediate pass since they are certainly no stranger to massive brawls. While Tammy may be a bit older and frailer, she's also smart enough to be able to avoid the worst of it anyway. Axel's not as smart, but he's also in better shape and can more than hold his own in a fight if need be. Other standouts include Marv, who would be able to take just about anything here. After all, what could this cast do to him that would be any worse than what Kevin did? Toy Santa once again uses his artificial body to his advantage, since his rubber face and plastic butt makes him basically immune to pain. Hans Gruber and Jimmy Martinez are also more than at home in the chaos of a brawl, and would be more than capable of holding their own in a fight even unarmed. And Ronald Jones Jr. is especially dangerous here, given his ability to use improvised weapons to particularly deadly effect. Unfortunately, the Snow Miser would have to go. Unlike his brother, Snow Miser is rather scrawny and frail to take a hit. And without his ice powers, he's far too weak to stand on his own either. Add on the fact that his icy aura makes him hard to conceal, and he's basically doomed here no matter what. Another death here would have to be Gretchen Fox. Asking a Muppet to fight a human is a tough sell even in the best of circumstances, and Gretchen is certainly not in the best of circumstances. She's old and frail and more than a bit abrasive, which would likely put a large enough target on her back to keep her from hiding all too effectively. For similar reasons, we'll also have to eliminate Clyde Northcutt. In addition to not being a fighter in the slightest, Clyde's bureaucratic nonsense is sure to get on the nerves of most of the other competitors, which cuts off his ability to hide effectively. 16 characters are left standing as we move into our next round, the Tug of War. While we won't be assigning characters to specific teams, teamwork is a factor in this game. This means that characters will be judged on their ability to work on a team, as well as their strength. If a character is strong but can't work on a team, then their survivability goes down significantly. Again, Mrs. Crumb and Mr. Ellingbow pass this one due to their exceptional teamwork skills. This may not be the case if they're on the same team, however even then, they have been shown to put their differences aside when absolutely necessary. The White Witch is also capable of working with others, and is also surprisingly strong even without her powers thanks to her large build. And Hans Gruber is also a solid mix of being strong, smart, and charismatic enough to easily lead his team to victory. Sadly, we have to eliminate Ebenezer Scrooge. Even if we're generous enough to assume this happens post-haunting, and he can actually work in a team, which honestly is almost certainly not the case, he is still far too frail and elderly to contribute much regardless. For similar reasons, the Grinch also has to go down here too. Barring the niche possibility of his heart suddenly growing three sizes at this very moment, he's far too weak and disagreeable to be able to lead his team to victory. We also have to see the Heat Miser fall here as well. In addition to being excessively disagreeable and unable to work with others, he also suffers for the same reasons that doomed his brother. His extremely hot aura would end up being a distraction for his team, dragging them all down to death with him. And finishing off this round, we have to eliminate Marcus Skidmore. If there is one consistent thing about Marcus, it's that he can only work in a team for so long. As soon as things start to go south, he'll try to backstab his teammates, which will only end up costing him his own life. Only 12 days of Christmas villains left as we move into our next round, a nice relaxing game of marbles. There are many ways to play this one out, but the easiest and most consistent one by far comes down to manipulation. If a character is able to manipulate someone into giving them all their marbles, then they have a high chance at survival. Conversely, if a character is easily manipulated out of their marbles, it's game over. Professor Hinkle is a magician, so he gets a pass. He's not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree, but his sleight of hand skills alone give him enough of an advantage that he would probably win before he gets tricked himself. Rudolfa is also incredibly manipulative, being able to get what she wants even without relying on her magic. 
and the White Witch is also a master manipulator, being able to use the desires of others to have them do her bidding. Only a few deaths here, starting with Mr. Ellingbow. To say he's not the sharpest tool in the shed would be an understatement, so he would be easy pickings for whoever he goes up against. Similarly, we have to eliminate Marv. If you get your butt handed to you by a child, even a child as creative as Kevin, you basically have no shot here. Finally, Toy Santa gets the elimination as well. He is by far the youngest character on this list, and his world experience is basically nil, so he has pretty much no chance in a game of wits. Moving on, we get to our penultimate round with the glass stepping stones. This is the toughest game to figure out, as it's primarily reliant on luck. However, there are two factors which can potentially allow a character to pass this game. That being the very niche possibility of being able to spot the tempered glass panels, or more likely, the likelihood of choosing a high number. We've got an especially tough call this time around considering the size and range of characters we have left, so we'll have to make this quick. The only ones with enough ego to fight for a low number would be Mrs. Crumb, Jack Frost, Rudolph Claus, and the White Witch. Exactly where each of them lands is unclear. The fact that they all congregate so close to the top means we can safely eliminate all of them. As for the remaining five, Professor Hinkle would be next to go. He's got more than enough of an ego to want a lower number, but is too much of a coward to fight for. Still, he'd likely end up somewhere in the middle and get eliminated. We also have to eliminate Granville Sawyer. While he would likely end up taking a number somewhere in the middle, that's nowhere near good enough to ensure survival in this game. The last three, however, are more likely to intentionally choose a higher number to avoid drawing attention. So this one is an extremely tough call. In the end, we're eliminating Jimmy Martinez, since he seems the most likely to let his pride force him to take a slightly lower number, but really, it's still a toss-up. And with that, we're down to our final round. That, of course, being the titular Squid Game. Compared to the other rounds, this is the most simple and straightforward. The winner of this game comes down almost exclusively to one-on-one -on -one combat. There's also the matter of following the rules of the game, though given that we've come this far, that's not really a problem. The two who survived at the end of the game are Hans Gruber and Ronald Jones Jr., a radical criminal mastermind going up against a vindictive serial killer, a Christmas story as old as time. Both have impeccable fighting skills, though in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Ronald has a slight edge over Hans, due to using melee weapons more often. However, Hans is also far smarter and more strategic than Ronald, being able to come up with plans and backup plans on the fly. Additionally, with nowhere to hide, Ronald loses the element of surprise, which is his main method of killing his victims, putting them on essentially even footing combat-wise. So while it is close, much like in the actual Squid Game, Brains comes out over bronze, and Ronald Jones Jr. goes down in the final round. And with that, Hans Gruber is the winner of our seasonal Christmas Squid Game. Not exactly what we expected when we set out to make this list, but with him now being the statistically best Christmas villain, we suppose this means that the debate on whether Die Hard is a Christmas movie now has the official Wicked Binge seal of approval. But let us know in the comments section which Christmas villain you think would have won the Squid Games. Make sure to hit that notification bell and binge our other Squid Game videos. But most importantly, make sure to have yourself a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.